In humanity's quest to answer the question, what is dark matter? One of the most popular candidates is a wimp. Wimps, or weakly interacting massive particles, are a very popular candidate for cold dark matter. Cold here means slow, because lots of the evidence for the existence of dark matter suggests that it needs to move slowly. So we're assuming here that any fast moving or hot particles can't be dark matter. This is because if dark matter moved too fast at relativistic speeds close to the speed of light, then it wouldn't cluster together and start forming structures and halos fast enough. Our simulations of the universe tell us that we wouldn't be able to form the large scale structure we see in space if dark matter was hot. In this video, let's discuss what a WIMP is and why they are such popular candidates for dark matter. Let's start with the name and see what each part is telling us. Starting with the P for particle. That bit's nice and easy. It's a particle, some new building block of matter we haven't yet discovered or detected. One quarter of the letters are done, and this is going very well. Next, let's take the W and I together, which stands for weakly interacting. This one is a little more tricky, but it means that out of all of the fundamental forces, which are gravity, the electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force, WIMPs only interact via the weak nuclear force and gravity. WIMPs don't feel the other two forces, so they can pass through an electric or magnetic field or pass near a gluon, and they don't feel anything at all. They act as if these forces just don't exist. WIMPs still feel gravity, and they also interact with other particles via the weak nuclear force, which is, in my opinion, the worst force. It's the least intuitive, and frankly it sucks, but I'll try to remain impartial while we discuss it here. Interactions between particles through the weak force are responsible for the radioactive decay of atoms, and for example, it helps nuclear fusion and nuclear fission take place, so it's actually pretty important. It's called the weak force because, well, it's very weak, and it can only act over incredibly small distances. It's limited to subatomic scales, and it can typically only act over distances less than about the diameter of a proton. It also does have a couple of interesting features, in that it's the only force to be carried by more than one force-carrying particle. While the electromagnetic force is carried by the photon, and the strong nuclear force is carried by the gluon, the weak force is mediated by three particles, the W plus boson, the W minus boson, and the Z boson. These all do something slightly different. The two W bosons allow for neutrino absorption and also allow electron and positron absorption, while the Z boson mediates the transfer of momentum, spin, and energy when neutrinos scatter off of matter. The weak force is also the only force that violates a couple of symmetries that we used to think were very fundamental, so it is a pretty unusual force. The force breaks parity symmetry, so if left and right are flipped, it doesn't behave in the same way. We used to think that also flipping the electric charges, so positive to negative and vice versa, would be more fundamental and never violated, even if parity was violated. But it turns out that the weak force also violates this so-called charge parity symmetry sometimes as well, which was a pretty big shock when this was discovered. See my video about axions for a more detailed description of charge parity symmetry, link in the description. It's actually also possible that if there are any more forces beyond the standard model of particle physics that we haven't discovered yet, that WIMPs might interact via them as well, as long as that force is as weak or weaker than the weak force. That's a lot of weak. Finally, the M in WIMP stands for massive, just telling us that the WIMP isn't massless like a photon or a gluon, but rather it has at least some mass, even if that mass is pretty small. So here, massive doesn't necessarily mean huge, just that it has some mass. The masses that WIMPs might have are what makes them such a popular dark matter candidate, because of something known as the WIMP miracle. This miracle comes from something called supersymmetry, which we affectionately often call SUSY. This is a proposed extension to the standard model of particle physics, and it predicts that every particle in the standard model has a supersymmetric partner, another particle with similar properties and a silly similar name. Each boson in the standard model has a partner fermion, and each fermion in the standard model has a partner boson. These supersymmetric partners have much larger masses than their standard counterparts, which SUSY enthusiasts cite as the reason that we might have never detected any of them yet. The silly names I mentioned follow a simple naming rule. If the standard model particle is a fermion, the SUSY boson associated with it has the same name but with an S in front of it. So for example, the SUSY partner of an electron is called a selectron. For a standard model boson, the SUSY partner gets an eno at the end of the name. So the SUSY particle that corresponds to the gluon is called the gluino or the SUSY partner to the W boson is called a Wino. I'm honestly not making any of this up, it's as ridiculous as it is true. <laughs> While these SUSY particles are still only proposed and haven't been discovered yet, 
The WIMP miracle refers to the fact that one of these supersymmetric particles is predicted to interact only through the weak nuclear force and gravity, and to have just the right mass for a WIMP that could offer the correct amount of dark matter in the universe. We tend to measure particle masses in a unit called electron volts, which is really a unit of energy, but through E equals mc squared, we have energy E, mass m, and c the speed of light. So we can easily convert a unit of energy into a unit of mass but we just use the unit of energy anyway. It's not necessarily that intuitive, so I'll also convert all of the masses I give here into kilograms. One electron volt represents an incredibly small mass, and it's equivalent to about 1.8 times 10 to the power of minus 36 kilograms, which is a number that looks like this, very small. A WIMP that could account for dark matter would have a mass of about 100 giga electron volts, where a giga electron volt is 1 billion electron volts. But even so, this mass is only about 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 25 kilograms. Since a particle of this mass is predicted by Susie, then many physicists see this as a very promising dark matter candidate. And if Susie is experimentally confirmed, then I would expect WIMPs to only get more and more popular in the dark matter argument. However, while the WIMP is a very popular candidate, both indirect and direct searches for WIMPs have failed to find any positive detections. And the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC, has also so far failed to find any evidence for SUSY. Indirect searches for WIMPs, such as the Fermi Gamma Ray Telescope, look for excess gamma rays coming from space that can be produced when WIMPs interact with themselves, and they might give their existence away like that. But just like at the LHC, nothing has been seen so far. Direct detectors of WIMPs attempt to see the effects of a WIMP collision with a nucleus in a super sensitive system set up on Earth. For example, noble gas scintillators should produce a pulse of light when the nucleus of an atom interacts with a WIMP. The Xenon-1T detector uses three and a half tons of liquid xenon, but even despite the size and sensitivity of these attempts, no detections of dark matter WIMPs have yet occurred. Even in the face of defeat, we aren't giving up hope though, and even larger experiments are planned to keep up the search. Because if something doesn't work, we just make it again but bigger and try again. So what do you think? Does the WIMP sound like a good dark matter candidate to you? Or do you have a different idea about what dark matter is? If you want to learn more about dark matter, the evidence for it and the candidates for what it might be, check out the videos and playlist in the description and consider subscribing if you enjoyed it. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.